In the Cove, I am Tangie Brewer with Stylish and Fit and Cove Leader. I am thrilled that you are joining me today to hear and to take part in this incredible Lunch and Learn session. We have a very special guest with us today. Her name is Deborah Page. I'm going to put her on the screen with me now. So there is Deborah. How are you today, Deborah? Hello, Tansy. I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me to do this. Well, I am so excited to have you on. Um, as you all know, you've been reading all week about what we're about to experience today, and that is a deeper dive into knowing what your pH is, the pH balance of the body. And um, as you know, in the code, we talk about the acidic versus alkaline balance of the body and how very vital and how important that is. And um, as I told you, you know, when you're going through this journey of health and wellness, the dots will begin to connect. It is definitely a journey. It is getting your environment of your body healthy. And that is the important thing. And when you start out, you know, your environment of your body is probably not where you want it to be. And you're probably feeling that with your energy and so forth. So I'm excited to have expert, pH balance expert, Deborah Page with us today. Deborah, could you please tell us just a little bit more about yourself? Well, uh, currently I'm the founder and president of New Cage Productions. I have two online stores and we have a home test pH kit that we sell nationally. And I've written the book, The Feel Good Food Guide. Um, I also have um, an app, the Food Calculator, P-H-O-O-D Calculator, which is a lot of fun. It's more like a game than it is tracking pH, so we can tell you before you eat an offending food if it's something you really want to do and what it's going to do to your pH balance. And then we also have a free online toxic screening test and an app for that as well. So. Um, Pretty much that's what I'm doing right now, and I love talking to people. Anybody who calls me, I'll have a conversation with them. I do do consulting. Um, I live in Naperville. Uh, that's pretty much me as far as my business and what I'm doing right now. Great. Well, thank you so much, Deborah, for that. Um, when Before you even got into this passion of yours with the pH balance, I know you went through some life events yourself. I know you, your dad, because I, I did a little bit of reading and, and research, your dad had throat cancer, um, and then there were some things about your son as well that you had to change as far as his eating, and then for yourself as well. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I thought people that shopped in health food stores and ate that way were out of their minds. Food was food. It didn't make any difference. I didn't walk into my first health food store until I was 40. Uh, at 37, my youngest son, Zach, was born. And he was born. He had lots of colic. He spit up his food. It was hard to nurse him. It was hard, he, you know, it was hard to find formula for him. Lots of problems. Um, and when he was born, you know, of course, the grandparents were able to come into the hospital, and I can remember my mom and dad couldn't come and see him when he was first born because my dad thought he had a cold. Well, it turns out that uh, two months later, that cold didn't go away, and it turned out that it was esophageal cancer. So the first year of Zach's life was the last year of my dad's. And uh, since I had quit my job, I was selling real estate. I was a realtor. I worked 70, 80 hours a week. Uh, all the way through my pregnancy, and uh, I decided that when, we, when I was going to have Zach, I was going to be an at-home mom because I had worked with his older brother. I, I'd been working since I was 15. So I decided I was going to be an at-home mom. We built a house. I was all settled in for suburban life, and then Zach was born with problems. And since I was home, I was the one that drove my dad to all of his exams. 
We went to Loyola. I mean, there were three or four different hospitals I was driving into, seeing oncologists and therapies. And um, I realized that Western medicine didn't quite offer um, everything that a, a person needs to be well and stay well. And just before my dad passed away, we had a hospice nurse who was coming to the house. He was able to die at home. And I remember talking to her, and she said, gee, your dad's like one of eight people that I'm seeing in this neighborhood, like within a five-block radius, that is uh, dying with esophageal cancer. They all have the same kind of cancer. Uh, and that, like, just this light bulb went on in my head. That wasn't a coincidence to me. And we all drank well water, and then I realized we were downstream from um, um, a plant that had produced a lot of toxic chemicals, and uh, it just it, it opened my eyes. And then once my dad was gone, now Zach is a year old, and his problems are getting worse and worse and worse. So we took him to an allergist and found out that there were only eight foods that he was not allergic to. Wow. So, uh, as I said, when I was 40, I walked into my first health food store, um, and in those days, uh, my son is almost 27 now, in those days, there, um, there was no place to buy gluten-free bread, and there was no place to buy uh, pasture-raised eggs. There was no place to buy all the things that I needed, so I joined an organic food co-op and eventually ran it out of my house so this great big semi would pull up in front of my house once a month and all the ladies would come here and we divide up the food but i always had recipes because i always loved food i'm uh, i'm sicilian on my mother's side so my dad always had a garden and my mom was always canning and we were eating just like the food was amazing growing up so i had this passion for food and i've always loved cooking so instead of making homemade pasta I started making healthier foods, greener foods, healthier foods, and people wanted my recipes, and that's when I put together the Feel Good Food Guide, which is, let's see, here's our 10-year anniversary edition right here. So I put all the recipes in the book. Congratulations. And, thank you. And then I started, uh, because I didn't have any money to go out and promote it the way I would have liked to, I just started going and throwing cases of books in the back of my car and with my baby in tow and I just went from store to store and Whole Foods picked me up and eventually, um, you know, things got going with, with the book. And then I had an opportunity to work with a, um, an, uh, a, a nutritionist. And she trained me. I didn't have formal training as a nutritionist. As I said, I was a realtor. Uh, and she trained me and I learned from her that the first thing she asked every client when they walked in the door was um, uh, their pH. She took everybody's pH and I learned from her just how important that was. And if your pH wasn't balanced, that was the foundation that House of Your Health was built on. Yes. And well Awesome, Deborah. I would love to define that, if you will, for everyone that's watching. What is the pH? What does P and the H stand for? pH is the potential of hydrogen. And it's basically, in your body, it's, it's, it's basically how your body can rid itself of acids. When we eat food, it, it goes through a chemical process. And it, the waste product is hydrogen. So it can be released through your lungs. It can be released in many ways, but hydrogen, because it, 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 it bonds with oxygen. So if you're, if you're not eating a healthy green diet and there isn't enough oxygen coming in, if you're not drinking enough pure water, you're not eating enough healthy food, there isn't enough oxygen coming in to bind with the hydrogen and get rid of it. And if you're not getting rid of the hydrogen, it starts to create a lot of problems with, within your body. So, um, it, it, so it's that potential, and I, I especially love it because of the word potential. It's a potential of hydrogen. It's up to you and how you treat your body, whether you can get rid of that corrosive substance or whether you let it accumulate. And I like to explain it. It's a little bit, if, if you don't start eating whole, green, healthy foods, um, 
It's sort of like having a savings account. If you stop, if you didn't have a job and you were living on your savings account and no other money was coming in, after a while, you'd become bankrupt. Your savings account would be gone. And the same thing is true of our health. If we don't take in green foods, our body has all these systems where they can, where they, where they can correct it. And the way to correct an acid system is with minerals, calcium, potassium, magnesium, um, all of these beautiful minerals. And if, if we're not bringing them into our body through, through vegetables, then we have to go to our store or our savings account. And our savings account are our bones, our teeth, our tissues, our organs, um, our muscles, and it starts pulling these minerals out. And so that's why you can drink a Diet Coke or a cola and not drop dead, because we've got all these systems. But if you continue to do these high acid foods, you're gonna hit the wall. You're gonna hit a point in your life where your reserves are used up. You're gonna have osteoporosis, you're going to have tooth decay, you're going to start losing teeth, you're going to start having organ and system failures, um, because keeping our blood alkaline is our body's prime function, because if our blood is an alkaline, we have an instant heart attack. And so all of these reserves are there, but if we're continually eating overly processed, sugary, artificial foods, um, uh, we're just borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, and after a while, body systems start to fail. For some people, it's early in life. Some people, it's later. In talking to people, I find for a lot of people, especially women, um, and men too, when they hit menopause, andropause, all of a sudden, all of these youth hormones that were keeping everything going start to diminish. And so if we haven't been eating properly and taking care of our bodies, that's when we start seeing failures. Um, and I've pretty much devoted my life to helping teach people. All I do is give people information that's out there, it's all over the place, but I've gathered it together and, um, and, and I, I, I share it. Um, awesome. it's, this is the book that goes with the litmus paper and it's the home test pH kit, and you've got your litmus paper here in your book. Uh, when I first started the business uh, of, the, of producing this, I was doing a newsletter every month, and I was printing my own newsletter. I had an inkjet printer. I was printing an envelope. I was folding the newsletter in half with every bit of information I could copy and taking the paper and, and dropping it in, and um, I hit the point where I was, I, the end of one year, I had made 10,000 of those all by myself on my kitchen table. And then all, and, and you spoke about this being, you know, a passion and you wanted to really yes. help people. And you mentioned the big P word, um, which is the potential, you know, yes. to, to really create an environment in your body where disease yes. can thrive. You know, there is that potential. And um, everyone has some sort of cells, right, in their body that they say are, are cancerous or, or whatever. You know, you we have live these... our lives with cancer. Every single one of us has a um, um, cancer cell in their body. And I, I'm going to share a personal story with you. About uh, four years ago, I was tired all the time. I eat a pristine diet. I exercise. Um, I... I, you know, I talk about pH, but things go wrong, even even when you're doing everything right. And uh, about four years ago, I was tired all the time. I thought, could it be my thyroid? So I felt and I realized I had a lump on my thyroid. So I went to the doctor and found out that I had a tumor on my thyroid. So uh, for a year, I, I tried every type of alternative healing I could. And sometimes you just need Western medicine. And it got to the point where um, I had to have half of my thyroid removed. And um, I, I spent some time feeling really sorry for myself. Here I eat healthy. Why did this happen to me? Uh, the typical thing that we go through. The tumor was removed. It was a pound and a quarter, by the way. It was removed, and it was benign. And so finally, my husband and my sons, they said, look, you know, you should be grateful that thing was benign because if you had been eating the way we used to eat, you, that probably would have been cancer. And I thought about that and I thought, 
what a gift to be able to see that. That even when things go wrong in your body, it doesn't mean that it's terrible. It's a wake-up call. That's so good. That you, Thank you for sharing that testimony, Deborah. What a very powerful one. And like you said, it is a wake-up call to get your attention to, you know, now take control of your body and go on that right path. So we're talking pH, everyone, which is a balance in the body. Now, can we go a little bit deeper into the pH? Um, what, how quickly have you seen people improve their pH in their body? If someone has a very acidic diet, can you can you tell us what would be an acidic diet and what would a normal pH be for a person who is operating in an acidic diet? What would be the process for you to take them through to begin to get their body alkaline and what would that balance be? Well, first of all, what you want to be is 7.0. 6.8 to 7.2 is the range. That is where your urine and saliva pH should be. Your blood needs to be 7.365 going into the heart and 4.10 coming out of the heart. Your stomach has a pH of uh, maybe 2.8, a range of, of you know, uh, 2.6 to 2.8. Your gallbladder has a pH. Uh, every organ and body system has a different pH. And when we test urine and saliva, what we're looking for, if there's too much acid in our system and we and our body can't clean it up and, and, and it's working overtime, your urine and saliva are going to show acid. Um, it can be 5.5, 5.8, 6.0, and it's going to show you that you're you're expelling too many acids. So the way to correct that, there are, you know there are lots of people selling drops and all sorts of different ways to do it artificially. I'm I like doing it the old-fashioned way, with the way that our ecosystem and nature has intended, and that's through food. Mm -hmm. And so I give people a ratio. 80% green foods to 20% healthy acid forming foods. And the healthy acid forming foods are um, uh, beans, rice, salmon, uh, other types of alkaline, uh, more, they're acid, but oily fish. Um, you want to stay away from any type of fish that does not have scales. You only want to eat fish with scales. Um, and red meat, um, but the red meat, um, you have to be careful. So if you're going to eat red meat, I like bison. Uh, I like any type of pasture-raised um, uh, animal. So it's, we're not talking about grain-fed, we're talking pasture-raised. So they're eating green grass, they're eating, they're eating bugs, they're eating they're eating what they in nature intends for them to eat. So that's the only type of meat um, that I recommend um, you eat. If that's not possible, eat as little red meat as, as you can. But as long as you keep that ratio, 80% green to 20% uh, healthy acid forming, you start to see results. As far as how long does it take, it depends on the individual. It depends on how much they're willing to embrace the lifestyle change uh, how much they're willing to, um, you know, start eating the greens, eliminating, you know, you don't want to do anything artificial. Sugar, I consider to be the gateway drug. I, I suggest to people to get to a point where they're doing no more than 35 grams of sugar a day from all sources. Um, I like for people to, to uh, at least until they're trying to get their pH balance, uh, to eliminate all sweet fruit. So that means the fruits that I recommend are avocados, lemons, limes, sour grapefruit, cucumbers, uh, squash, anything with a seed in it that does not have uh, a lot of sugar, that, that does not have sugar, I consider a fruit. And um, does that mean you can never eat another apple? No. Once you're balanced, if you want to eat one fist-sized piece of, um, of sweet fruit a day, I do suggest people eliminate things like grapes, bananas, anything that's overly sugar because fructose is just as dangerous as refined sugar if you don't do it in moderation. Um, 
And then the rest is vegetables. It doesn't have to be raw. I mean, if you're, you're having problems with gas or digestion, then I recommend you lightly steam your vegetables until your body can handle it. Um, even though I was eating healthy, uh, when I decided to, to have that lifestyle change and completely convert to a pH balanced diet, it took me personally three months. Three months to get my pH where um, my body wasn't cleansing. Because when you go through a cleanse, you're doing just that. Your body is dumping acids like crazy. So you have to get through your cleanse, which is what happens when you start eating a lot of green foods and eliminating the acid foods. Um, and then basically, it's just maintenance. And you learn through the pH. In fact, let me... And I'm open this up. Here's the pH. Paper. Before you go there, um, yeah. Deb, before you open that up, um, really quickly, sure. um, you mentioned, you know, we're talking about all the different things that people can do. And in three months, you know, it's great for everyone out there to know that they can definitely improve their pH. Yeah. But exercise is in an amazing way as well, right? And then at the beginning of an exercise regimen, that it can dump toxins so your pH can be a little out of balance. But wouldn't exercise be a great way to also um, get your pH? At a good balance. Exercise is another thing, and it's all about balance. Um, I like to get people started with just walking, just 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 to get used to it. If they've been leading a sedentary life, just walking. Um, personally, what I do, I have a rebounder, and I rebound every day because that drains the lymph systems. Fifteen minutes on the rebounder is equivalent to forty-five minutes of an aerobic exercise. And, and, and that's like um, that's a. Um a trampoline, by the way, everyone. Yeah, trampoline. <laughs> I know some people may not know exactly what a rebounder is, but I have one too. But it's great because you can you can jump on that, you know, in the home, and mm -hmm. it's a great tool to have. But go and ahead. the kids love it. Yes, Children they love it. they do. <laughs> they love it. Um, there's a rebounder, so I walk. Um, my um, my walk partner is my dog. You know, right. so um, I walk every day. I do the rebounder. I try to get on that rebounder. I'm, I'm privileged, I'm blessed, I'm able to work from a home office. Right. So I have my rebounder, it's like right there, it's just out of uh, spring yeah. range. Um, and so I try to every hour spend a couple minutes bouncing on my rebounder. Um, I uh, just started taking a Zumba class. So yeah. I do Zumba a couple times a week. Um, I do yoga, um, I've done weights. Yes. Um, Strength training, great, because that Strength also, training. right, great for uh, the the muscles, because as you mentioned too, when you have been leading a very sedentary lifestyle and your body is acidic, then uh, chances are that um, it's been pulling from your, your muscles, your bones, you know, and you may be on your way to osteoporosis, so you really do need a good strength training program. Go oh, ahead, Deborah. Exactly, especially if you're a small bone, light person, you know, lightweight, um, yeah, you, you've got to be lifting some weights because your bones will really, yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll regret it later on. Right. Um, but yeah, no, exercise is vitally important. Anything that's going to bring oxygen into right. your system. Absolutely. Okay, Deborah. now if you can, you can definitely go ahead now with the pH strips that you were doing. Sure. Thank you. Sure. This is what the tape looks like. I'm going to open it up. This is the color chart. Um, and the color chart uh, goes from 5.5 to 8.0, and the range you want to be in is right here, these bottom three green colors. So um, it comes in a the plastic container, and there's a foil wrapper. You take off the foil, and you discard the foil, and you find the end of it. It's like a roll of paper towels or toilet tissue, and there it is. And then you put it back in your plastic case. You put your color strip back in. You snap this on, and then you can either check your saliva. I have all the instructions in the book that go into great detail on how you do this. But you tear a piece off, and then let's see what where I'm at right now. Okay, I ate um, about 45 minutes ago, and my pH was purple right after I ate, which is what you want. But now it's gone back down to the, I'm right in the, the range down here. And then another thing that I offer to people, which I highly recommend, are my greens. So I'm feeling my pH going down a little bit, so you just drink some green. Let's do that for my pH. 
and play with this all day long. This is my favorite toy. No, it didn't work out. But, um, and you can test urine or saliva. Saliva is reactive. Urine is metabolic. In other words, um, you, it's best to check your first boy in the morning uh, to see what your pH is because that tells you how your body's been handling acids and toxins over a long period of time. And then you check saliva after and in between meals then for the rest of the day. Um, and then once you get your balance and you, you know that you're eating the correct foods and everything's working the way it should, you don't have to be checking your pH all day long anymore. But in the beginning, I think it's a good idea. I, I think of it as training wheels on a child's bike. It teaches you balance. And once you have your balance, just like riding a bike, you never lose it. And you know when you're eating foods that are not going to be um, uh, anabolic, they're, they're building you up, they're going to be catabolic, and they're going to be tearing you down. So you only want to be eating foods that are feeding your body, not feeding parasites, not feeding parts of you that you, you, don't, you don't want fed. You want to feed your body because for me it's important. Um, your body comes with your soul and you want to keep that house nice and clean um, for the most precious thing, who you are. Thanks. I think um, that's, that's great information, um, Deborah. Thank you for for testing your, your pH in front of us and everybody out there, you know, you'll be able to test your own pH. What, what I would really recommend that you do is try your pH right now and then at the end of the program, you know, three, four months, then test your pH again and see where you are. So, so Deborah, would you please let us know where can we order these pH strips? and and how much are they and, and so forth. And then we'll get back into a discussion too, but I just want to throw that out there because I'm sure there are people who are ready to just go ahead and, and order so that they can get their pH tested. Do they, are, they, are, uh, are they on your site, Tanji? They uh, are. They are. Would they, your, the information is on the site um, okay. for, for the pH. There is a link there as well. So. Um, and you can get in contact with Deborah. So we're talking about pH, everyone, knowing um, where the balance of your body is, the cleaning up the environment of your body. And um, through the journey of getting healthy, you know, there are, in order to start a journey, you have to, you take inventory of where you've been sometimes, right? And so, oh, yeah. you know. But, and and, a, and a, a visualization that I always use is just imagine what your house would look like if you just took garbage and threw it on the floor and never threw it away. So How good. long could you live in that house with the garbage just piling up and piling up and piling up around you? But that's what people do to the inside of their body, which is a house for their spirit, and they right. do that every day. Right, and then they wonder, you know, you kind yes. of wonder why you feel so boggled down like you don't have the energy I and for you you could probably um, attest to this Deborah I have not needed um, I've actually I've I don't even think I've ever I've never never drinking I've never drank coffee rather or soda I'm sure when I was um, probably in my early childhood um, stages um, eight or six seven or something like that but I've never needed anything as far as caffeine to give me the energy food truly gives me that energy and I've had um, I've operated at a very high intensity with energy because of the food and I have not felt deprived at all can you speak a little bit about that Deborah someone who's thinking you know what in order for me to get my body at a good pH and get my the environment of my body healthy and thriving, it seems like a, a daunting task. It seems like so many things where I have to deprive myself and I can't have the things that my friends are having. Can you speak about how eating for you, Deborah, you mentioned something that you had for lunch that I thought was just so tasty and it had my mouth watering over here. So <laughs> can you yes. speak about that? Um, my son is, um, is home for the summer from college and uh, he's trying to eat healthier, so we had, uh, I fixed quinoa for him the night before. I don't know if you're familiar with quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A, and it's a gluten-free grain, 
Uh, it's from South America. Uh, and it's become really popular now, and it is so tasty, and you cook it like rice. And he was looking at the back of the quinoa package because he liked it, because he hadn't had it since he was a kid. He's been away from home for so long. And he looked at it, and he thought, and there's this recipe on the back of the quinoa package for uh, black bean quinoa burgers. So he made them for dinner last night. We cooked them out on the grill, and I got to tell you, oh, my gosh, they were so good. I had one for lunch. Um... Uh, just a little bit ago, and uh, when I bit into it cold, it tasted like it tasted like a burger. I mean, it, it these are really good. Um, and there's all sorts of food out there. People are eating the same six foods, rearranged, calling them different things, but just the standard American diet or the SAD diet, SAD, standard American diet, uh, consists of Sugar, wheat, beef, corn, soy. Uh, what am I missing? That's pretty much what what most of America eats. I have so mother thought whose idea of something green on the table was lime jello. Wow. <laughs> she didn't end up very well. <laughs> no, or you have green beans that are swimming in bacon and that have been cooked so right. long, you know, that they have no crunch to them and they've just I been killed. Green. Would you... I, I, nothing like a fresh green bean just, I just, I, I cook as little as possible. And what I do cook, I lightly steam. Um, I eat very simply, if I'm starving and I've got to eat something quick, I'll cut an avocado in yeah. half and get a spoon and just eat half the avocado. And for most people, they think avocado, oh my gosh, that's a lot of fat, you can't do that. That is good fat. It's right. when you consider that our bodies are 77% water, just like the earth, and of that 77%, our brains are 85% water, and 65% of the mass is fat. So our brain is water and fat. So if we're not taking in good fat to feed our brains and enough water to keep us. Um, uh, properly hydrated, there again, we're going to be in trouble. Water is bringing in oxygen. Yes, and I'm so glad that you mentioned um, the whole concept about fat wrapped around the avocado because I've seen a lot of diets out there, and of course, we've seen packages where it says low fat. And even though it's zero grams of fat, the sugar content can be high. It could have partially hydrogenated soybean oil. So here you have people losing this weight, but their environment of their body is still acidic, and um, it's still not working in their favor. Favor. Fat does fat does not make you fat. Sugar makes you fat because sugar is nothing but pure acid. And when you when you consume a lot of sugar. That creates a very acidic environment, and something that people don't realize is when our body is acid, keep in mind our body's trying to protect itself, it's trying to protect its blood and its organs, so not only is it taking calcium and magnesium and potassium from bones and teeth and tissues, it is creating fat to protect your organs. Right. So when you're eating a lot of acid foods, highly acid foods like coffee, like soft drink, soda pop, um, like, um, or artificial sweeteners. Mm -hmm. If anybody out there wants to really have their brain blown, start Googling and looking up how artificial sugar is made, what it is. Right, and that, and then and gum, sugar-free gum, you think that you're doing a service to your body, and it ha every sugar-free gum, to the most part, has aspartame, correct? Oh my gosh, and aspartame, it's, it's, they, ferment, they ferment and rot vegetables, then they put bacteria that has been fed high fructose corn sweetener in with these rotten fermented vegetables, they create this toxic nasty soup, and then the bacteria, you're going to like this, poops out the sugar, and that's what they make it out of. Is that um, just? Yeah. I know that just makes you, you know, like. It's highly addictive. Right, because with with sugar too, I know it it produces in the brain, um, it releases dopamine, right, and it's just 
I've, I've heard sugar being even related to a lot of researchers yeah. researchers have said cocaine because it is very addictive just like there's one, there's one molecule difference and, a, and in, in chemistry it's only it's it's like it's 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 right there now you take a molecule of blood and you take a molecule from a green leaf mm -hmm. and you put them on top of each other and they are apps they, they they fit together just like this the only thing difference is the blood molecule has uh, iron in the center, and the um, the uh, the leaf has uh, um, is uh, magnesium. So that's the only difference. You put them together, and they're identical. So what does that tell you? The perfect food for your blood is is green leafy foods. Right. Absolutely. And when you think about the green leafy foods, if we can even talk about how can you increase that at every meal, what can you remove that is acidic and what can you add that's alkaline? You talked about that, the quinoa burger that you had, you know, um, adding some some leafy greens on I that have even. The salad. Yeah, I have the salad. Oh, you had a salad. Great. Like I said, I've got my green drink. And you've got I your green drink. Do, um, my husband and I uh, start out every morning juicing. We juice um, kale, we juice um, celery, we uh, juice one green apple, we juice limes, um, we juice um, uh, fennel, and um, sometimes I'll do other green leafy things. But that's pretty much what we juice every morning, and we do about 12 ounces of this brilliant, beautiful green drink that just absolutely energizes us for the day. And my husband was a junk food junkie. He survived, he, when I met him, he was smoking close to three packs of cigarettes a day, consuming an entire pack of Pepsi-Cola, a six pack of Pepsi every day, and drinking as much as 12 cups of coffee a day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and, and for then, him, and how is his pH? I was talking about he hit 50 and he started hitting the wall. Yes. And now he's a convert. Now, he's how's his bad. pH, Deborah? How's his how's his pH? The pH of his body after you know smoking the cigarettes and being the the junkie, and now that you have helped revitalize his life, how is his pH when he tested? Does he test it off? Well, when he used to test his pH before, he got discouraged and didn't want to do it. I can't tell you the number of people, and he was like this, who call me and say, I don't think this paper is working because it's bleaching white. It only starts at 5.5, five, so if your pH is below 5.5, five, five, it's going to bleach the paper white or it's not going to register. And his pH was so low, it didn't even register. And uh, now he, he has a job where he's under a lot of stress, so he struggles with keeping it where it needs to be. Uh, but now he started to exercise more than he used to, and he's eating green. And his pH actually gets up to 6.8 now. Um, you mentioned stress um, in the body, and I know a lot of people think of pH in terms of new, you know, the food that we eat, which is, of course, very important, but also um, it's important that you really control the stress as well as your emotions because that produces, you know, cortisol and, and all of those things. Yes. So could you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, you know, we're never going to change the world. We're never going to stop our children from driving us crazy. We're not going to stop the stress at our jobs. We're not going to be able to stop the stressors that are around us. Uh, all we can do is find a way to manage the stress internally. I recommend meditation. Um, by eating the acid-forming foods, that's creating stress. This is a, a mind, body, spirit thing. It's like the, a three-legged stool. If one of the legs of that stool is missing, you're not going to be able to sit on it. You're going to fall over. If one of the legs is shorter than the other ones, you're going to be wobbling all over the place on it. So you've got to take care of everything. And stress, I know exercise helps reduce stress. I know a good clean diet helps reduce stress. And I think meditation, not as part of a religious practice, but as a way of clearing out the thoughts that are stressing us out, even if it's for it's 30 seconds, if you sit and you try to meditate for 20 minutes, 
and you only get 30 seconds where your mind is clear, that is a victory because that's 30 seconds longer than you would have gotten that relief without the meditation. So stress is, I think, stress really is the true root of all illness and disease. You know, yes, and stress and, and, and bitterness, those things that you hold on to. Maybe yes. there's things that happen in your life and people are holding on to those things. They don't realize that those things fester and they can um, breed, you know, disease in the body as well. But with with meditating and really allowing yourself to quiet, to become in a, in a quiet place, um, I find that that is something that's very hard for people because the mind continuously goes. And one thing about you know, being in um, the profession that I, I'm in and helping clients on the journey of health and wellness, one thing I always hear is I'm too busy. I, I have kids. I have, you know, I'm too busy to really um, focus on this or focus on that, especially when it comes to health and wellness. I hear that B word a lot. And for me, life only seems to get busier and it doesn't matter what profession you're in i know you know i was telling someone that if the president of the united states of america finds an hour and a half he was talking you know how he works out every day then surely we could you know there's so many issues that are going on in our lives individually but you must make it um a point to do that. Can, can you talk about that a little bit where the balance of life, like balancing the, the, the busyness, because I like to say right now when someone says, well, Tangie, are you too busy to talk to me? And then what I say is, no, I'm intentional. You know, you have to make sure that you are in t being intentional, that everything is with a purpose, because if I take a client and I look at everything that they're doing and they tell me that they're too busy, then I find out, oh, well, they did have a time to you know sit on the couch and watch that DVR show you know or do mm -hmm. something that takes up a little more time I'd love to talk a little bit more about that balance Deborah well I think sometimes people and I'm including myself we find it easier to create all this drama around us than it is to have that quiet moment and really, truly look at who we are and 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 what we are. Um, and I, I Marianne Williamson, I, I, I'm sure you've read um, her famous quote, uh, Nelson Mandela used it, uh, read from his inauguration uh, speech, and it's basically, it's the light we're afraid of, not the darkness. We don't realize the power we have. And as long as we, I used to have a friend who said, you know, you're hiding your light under a bushel. It's true. We all have this beautiful, wonderful light inside of us. And we spend a lifetime putting all these layers on top of it because we're almost afraid of that light. And I think, I, for me, the first step for my awakening was when when I started eating with Zach, and I, I was feeding my husband and older son one way, and I was cooking all the special allergy foods for, for Zach, and I had put on 30 pounds with the pregnancy, and I had tried every diet you could imagine, exercising, you, you name it, I couldn't lose an ounce. And so I went on this diet with him, and I found what he was eating. So, so I cut out uh, wheat and dairy, those were the only two things, things I cut out, out and I was eating everything else. One month, I dropped 20 pounds. Between the experience with my dad's cancer, the experience with the food, the awakening I had with Zach, it was like this gigantic, my life was finally turned on and I realized how sometimes everything you know is wrong, everything we've been taught. Most of what we're taught we're taught through advertisers. We're told we need this. You know, you need you need your to dye your hair. You need to color your nails. You need to wear this perfume. You need to use this deodorant. You need to do all these things to be okay. And the fact of the matter is, all we need is to just be clean and clear. That's all we need is to be clean and clear. And so, um, as far as finding time. There is, a, Tangie, you're 100% you're correct. There's always time. So you start looking at what can I give up that's going to give me the time? How can I, you know, the time it takes me to brew that coffee 
well, what can I be doing while I'm brewing that coffee? Or the time it takes me to drive to Starbucks and buy that coffee, what can I be doing? Or the money that I'm spending on cookies and ice cream and soft drinks and diet foods, which is the most fattening thing on the planet. Um, instead of doing all of those things, what, how, what would be a better use of my time? Um, uh, I mean, it, I divide my day out. I, I used to get up in the morning, the first thing I did was turn on my computer and go to my computer and check my emails and do all, everything that I thought I could do with business and then rush around the rest of the day. Now I do not turn on my um, computer until I have my quiet time, until my husband and I have had our time together to drink our juice, until I've had time to walk my dog, until I've had time to do the things that I think are going to enrich me. And then I turn on the computer. And now I'm strong enough to help the people who call and to give answers to people who, who are really who are lost and just looking for one little grain of truth, one little grain of something that they can they can take with them. That's uh, so good. You know, and I'm not telling anybody anything that's new. Right, right. No, that's really good. And sometimes it just is a reiteration and it stirs something different within all of us because you mentioned you know getting up in the morning um, I think that I see so many people that hustle and bustle they're they're rushing out and that really starts the pace of the day but if you can wake up in the morning and drink some greens or have a cup of green tea you know or, or something like that to silence you know your your mind and get ready for the day but this is a total mind and body and, and, and soul thing. Yeah. I mean, it's so important to to take control of your life. And this is what we're talking about, you know, changing the pH of your body, having the potential to change it in the direction that it should go. And so, um, Deborah, you mentioned that it could take anywhere from, from three months to do, but, you know, and changing the pH, those leafy greens, adding that, that salad. We talked about the powerful greens that... Um, kale, oh, yeah, oh, kale. Oh, a great thing to do is to take fresh kale. You can find organic, great. If you can't, that's okay too. It's fresh kale, and you put just a little bit of olive oil on the palms of your hands, and you rub down those leaves and just get them glossy, and then you take them off the stem and you, you tear them into bite sized pieces. I have a dehydrator, but you don't need one. You put your oven on the lowest setting, and you put those pieces on um, a cookie sheet. And you dry them out until they're crispy. You put a little salt on them, sea salt. Always do sea salt, never table salt. And they are crunchy. They are alkalizing. They are feeding your body with all these vitamins and minerals. And they take the place of, like, say, a potato chip or a corn chip or something that's going to be tearing your body down. Now you're eating a crunchy, salty, wonderful treat that's building your body up. At night, instead of sitting there and eating a bowl of popcorn, I tell people, chop celery, chop up a green apple, um, take some soaked raw almonds and mix that all together and cut them into popcorn-sized pieces and start eating that bowl of alkalizing, nourishing food instead. It tastes delightful. You're still getting that, 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 that craving of little bitty chewy crunchy bites it's it's amazing that's that's so great and there are so many other things you mentioned the avocado um i had a a smoothie that i i love it was i put the avocado on a little cacao powder in there and you can put um also some greens in there as well i put a little raw coconut and it was just the best you know caribbean style smoothie in my opinion you know um so many alternatives that you can do that you will enjoy to get the body where it needs to be. Did you have another example, Deborah? Oh, no, I'm just thinking uh, avocados. I have a lot of recipes on my website, um, which is findingmyphbalance.com. Awesome. Um, and I have a lot of recipes on there. I mean, you can make a key lime pie out of avocados that is amazing. You make the crust out of uh, ground of walnuts and unsweetened coconut and, you, and a little bit of coconut oil and you press that into your, your pan and then you take avocados and then limes and some stevia which is a, a natural sweetener that does not register as sugar. So stevia, a little bit of almond milk, um, 
and you, you blend that up and you put that in that pie crust you made and you refrigerate it for a couple of hours, you have key lime pie. If you want to make chocolate pie, you take fair trade uh, cocoa and you uh, put, instead of the lime, you put in the, the, the cocoa and maybe a tablespoon of maple syrup. If I'm going to use sugar, I only use uh, whole natural sugar, not refined sugar. And you know, maybe a tablespoon of, of maple syrup in there with some more stevia, and you fill that pie crust up. And you've got this beautiful chocolate pie, you know, that is going to nourish your body and be alkaline and feed you, and, and nothing you have to feel guilty about. Um, and it's smoothies. I mean, Angie, I mean, I'm on the same page with you. I make green smoothies all the time, all the time, and I love playing with them. I tell people, play with your food. This isn't a punishment. This is a gift. This is a gift. Oh, um, that's so good. Uh, and I, I also, another product that I have on my side is Dandy Blend, which is an amazing coffee substitute. So, because the energy you're getting from sugar and the energy you're getting from coffee and the energy you're getting from, from soft drinks is lying to you. It's lying to you the same way as Rob would lie to you. Right. Uh, it's not true energy. It's spiking up and then you're dropping off the edge of the cliff and then you're spiking up and you're dropping off the end, edge of the cliff okay. and the type of um, even smooth clean energy you get from green foods it, it sustains you i mean i'm i'm uh i'm going to be 64 on my next birthday and i have more energy than i had when i was 35. oh that that is good news because we we had two doctors that were on, on on Saturday, and they were speaking about rebooting um, your your aging process, right? <laughs> you can sort of, you know, reboot that. And so how awesome it is to hear you say that even in the latter part of, of your life that you're, you are renewed. And really, the age is now we get to really to redefine that for ourselves. So awesome. The human body is designed to live to 120. And, and we've got people that celebrate if they make it to 75. You yes. know, so it's, I mean, we should celebrate every day. Don't, Don't get me wrong. wrong. I'll be glad to make it to 75. But, but I'm just saying, saying we're selling ourselves short. short. We're believing the lies that we've, we've been told. And what we need is that, that still point. And for me, it's food, it's, it's meditation, it's exercise. Last Thursday, I, I just got back from a, a trip. I have had so much work to catch up on. It's just like I've been a crazy person. And last Thursday was my Zumba class. Uh, my Zumba class was at noon, noon to one. I did not have the time to go. I did not have the time to go. There were a million other things my brain was telling me I should be doing. But I made this commitment to myself to go, and I did. I tore myself away from what I was doing, and I went to that Zumba class. And I laughed. I had a community of other women around me. Uh, and for me, my poor little brain has to really hold out to those dance steps. And it's like a meditation. Because you have no other thought in your head while you're dancing and laughing and smiling and enjoying yourself. Oh, that is so good. Um, I love that you chose to bring value to your body during that time. And really, you probably found that you had more energy to even do what you needed to do. The things that you thought you had were, you know, that was going to monopolize your time and you invested in yourself. And so everyone out there, if you're listening, I, I trust that this has been very valuable to you. If you have any questions right now, please direct them to info at circleofvitality.com. We wanna get those to you at the end. We're nearing the end of this session with Deborah, who is such a wealth of information concerning the pH of the body, but you, Everyone has the opportunity, right, Deborah? Every everybody has the opportunity to get these these tests, these strips. Now, I know that they they don't test the um, the blood, right? That's something that you have no, to do you need at the doctor's office. And uh, I've had um, a lot of people who've taken science classes. There's no such thing as pH of the body. Technically, that's true, but blood has a pH, uh, all of our organs have a pH, it's the most performed lab test on the planet. 
if your swimming pool pH isn't right, you can't get in it because uh, it'll be acid and will, will destroy your skin. So you've got to get your fish tank. If anybody out there has ever raised fish, if the pH of that fish tank isn't where it needs to be, the fish die. Well, think about the fluids of our body. That's our eternal fish tank. That's our eternal swimming pool. Right now, we're having all these issues with global warming. It's changing the pH of the oceans. Once the ocean pH starts to go, all the animals in it die. That's the other part of this that I love. When you eat this way, you're giving back to the Earth, which ultimately is the mother for all of us. It's the spaceship we all survive on, and we've got to take really good care of it. And eating this way, every time you eat this way, you buy something organic or you eat something green, you're helping support a farmer, you're helping give back to the Earth, and you make a difference. And I think we all make a difference. And people who think they don't, they've been lied to so much that they don't realize what a difference every single soul, every single one of us is important. That's so good. It's called, I, I like to call it conscious consumption. You know, yes. you're, you're being very conscious about what you're, what you're consuming. And um, you mentioned the, the pH right now, even as you all know, in you know, Western medicine or in, in hospitals and doctor's offices, you know, they have a protocol that they must follow. You know, yes. they have partnerships with the drug companies, you know, and all of those things. You know, of course, all you guys know, I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar, I'm sure, industry um, every year. So there's things that uh, a doctor, they, they won't prescribe you a pH, you know, prescription and say, wow. hey, here's the 80-20 rule. So you really... Um, have to be the captain of, of your ship with this and um, realize yeah, that the power. Food. Right, absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah. Absolutely. Well, Deborah, this has been great. You've been certainly fantastic indeed. I want to go over, I know you, looks like you, te you test your pH, you know, throughout the day. How many times um, would you rec recommend um, the normal person start right now um, and testing their, their pH on a journey of um, wanting to change the environment to their body? The first two weeks, at least the first two weeks, I mean, you get 15 feet on this roll. If you tear it off into like one inch pieces or one and a half inch pieces, you're going to get 120, 180 uses out of it. So it's really a bargain. Um, and I suggest that you test your pH, urine pH first going in the morning, and then you test your saliva pH. There's a chart that comes in the book. There's a chart. I recommend people make copies of the chart. And they, they fill out that chart every day for the first two weeks. And this isn't forever, this is just short term. Um, and you check your saliva then. Before you eat breakfast, you check your saliva. Before you brush your teeth, before you've done anything, you check your saliva. And then after breakfast, you check your saliva. And you check your saliva right after a meal. That's going to give you your reactive reading. Remember, that's the reactive one. And it's going to tell you what you just ate was acid warning or whether it was alkaline forming. And if you eat, if you drink coffee and it tests really alkaline because coffee is so acid, that high alkaline reading is telling you that now all of your, 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 your bumpers are kicking in. All of your calcium and magnesium is going into your blood. It's leaving your bones, it's leaving your teeth, it's leaving your tissues. It's going into the blood so your heart doesn't stop. So you've got to, you know, so that's important. It's all explained in the book. But that's really important. And throughout the day, every time you eat a meal, check your pH. Before you eat the meal, your saliva before, and check your saliva after you eat a meal. And then before you go to bed at night, check your urine saliva again. For two weeks, just, just be doing this. And it's so small, it fits in a pocket, it fits in your purse. It's not, it is not at all hard to do. Um, that's my recommendation. And then... Once you get your balance, and once you can take those training wheels off of you, uh, then you can start, to, I, I, I check it every morning. I just, of course it's my business, but I check it every morning, and I want to stay on track, because you can fall off track really quickly. So you have a death in the family, or somebody gets sick, or you're afraid you're going to lose your job. Anything that creates this stress in you, you get into a car accident, your pH is going to bottom out. So you want to be on top of that so you can control stress and control your diet 
and, and keep you where you need to be. And I, I promise you, I promise you, if you can get your pH balanced and you can start eating these healthy whole foods, miracles will begin to happen in your life, not just your body, but in your life. And it will radiate out to everyone around you. Thank you so much, Deborah. Fantastic, fantastic indeed. And I know you've helped hundreds of thousands of people all over the world um, find out what their pH is. So I would encourage you all to do that. So we are out of time, but Deborah Page, you are just such a gift to the earth. Thank you for following your passion indeed. And everyone, order her book and get the pH balance strips so that you can check yours as well and see where you are and begin to change the environment of your body by you releasing your own potential that you have to do so. So thanks again, Deborah. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you so much. Thanks. And, and we look forward to getting the pH, pH strips. And um, I look forward to hearing from you all about how your pH improves. We'll see you in the cove. Thanks, Deborah. See everyone Thank soon. You.